Welcome to Magical Moments with Elena Chapman, the place for you to break free from the norm and celebrate your life, because what we believe in our hearts becomes our reality. This is Magical Moments with Elena Chapman. Welcome to Magical Moments, and I'm your host, Elena Chapman, and you know the show is for that ease and that betterment in your life. And you know... It was yesterday I was holding a class on Zoom. I do that. I have a lot of classes with people all over the place, so the best way to do that is to get everybody on Zoom. And uh, a couple people in the class were bringing up how... Uh, how could I possibly understand the, the the struggles they were going through and how they're trying... It's just so hard to hold on through struggles. Now, <laughs> everyone in their lives has struggles. Some of us have more struggles than others, but it doesn't make our struggle any less. And I think there's, there's struggles happen in a funny way, but the most important thing is holding hope. And the other thing is, you know, I wouldn't change my life for anything. Isn't that interesting? I would not change my life. Everything that I have gone through, every horrible struggle I have gone through, every uh, le- what I like to call learning exp- uh, experience, any, any kind of victory I have celebrated, are all what have taught me and led me more on my journey. And I think when we start not owning their struggles like a badge, not letting it bury us under, not letting us relive it in the worst way all the time, we can actually find ourselves growing from it. And that is why I have, she is a friend and she is also um, a pretty remarkable woman. Her name is Lisa Winston. She's a gifted vocalist and artist. We have that in common also. Best-selling author, TV host, producer, intuitive mindset strategist, spiritual teacher, and inspirational speaker. I love all this. A lo- she has a lot. Oh, she talks about, let's put it this way, a life of extreme challenges. Ha <laughs> ha. Including she's lost her home to wildfire and had breast cancer. This made her hungry for a deeper connection to Source, as well as wanting to live out her true life mission. Of course it would. Don't you agree? And today her primary message is clear. And this is what it is. I love this. Life is always happening for you. And challenges are sent to refine you, not define you. Don't you like that? Ah, to refine you, not define you. Lisa has produced many global summits and top influencers and continues to be featured on summits, masterclasses, national radio, podcasts like this one and radio stations and cable TV shows. She speaks and teaches at events and still performs and records. She co-hosts the Mindset Reset TV show, which I have been on. So with that, I would like to bring on Lisa Winston. Hello, Lisa. Good morning, beautiful. I was sitting here listening to you read that, and I was chuckling because I wanted to, you know, put my comments in right away. <laughs> <laughs> Everything you're saying before and during the, the bio. Yeah, I am so grateful to be here and honored, and I love this conversation. I cannot wait to get into this. Yes, I know. <laughs> well, first, I know that this is this is really an important topic because most of us are, so many people are suffering. So many people yeah are are living through things, and so many times we we don't even want to talk about it. We keep it all hush 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 like it's a major secret. But you have a book called The Turning Point that you talk about challenges and how to say yes to the challenges, not to hold it into the shadows. Am I correct? Yes, your turning point really talks about um, you know following your inner guidance, first of all, that whole journey. Yes. But then, yeah. of course, after I wrote your turning point, then I hit one of the biggest uh, humps of my life, bumps of my life, you know, where I just have been healing from neuro Lyme disease um, for the yes. past year. So it's, it's kind of like life just keeps throwing things at you. But what I love that you said was that um, we shouldn't keep it silent. We're here to help other people with when we break through our struggles. And also, it just makes us stronger. So, yeah, bring it on, right? <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> 
Well, today, but yeah. I, I no no no. You are all right. What about the, I won't? Can we talk about what you're going through now? Because this is big. I'm on Facebook with you, and I've watched you through this journey, and um, it's been a tough journey. And so, can you explain what this uh, neuro Lyme disease is? Because I, oh. anyone could get this. Well, there are a lot of people walking around that have it that don't know it. That's the that's even more and, special. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's one of the reasons I'm going to be adding it to my platform because I really feel I'm here to help people. And I've been blessed enough to be led to the right functional doctor doing the right treatments. And there are people suffering for 20 years or more. Um, briefly, wow. what happened to me in a nutshell is that <clears throat> Joe and I, my life partner, Dr. Joe Vitale, we were in Italy last March for the month. And we ended up being in a house that had mold toxic mold. Plus, I had come down from a year of, you know, taking care of my mother till she passed and a lot of relocation, lot driving, of moving. And I was exhausted. Right. Um, you know, and the mold, people, right? mold is, uh, I'm deathly allergic to mold. So I understand that I, part. Yeah. It's big for everybody, I think. Um, anyway, we got back and Joe's dad had passed away the last day we were in Milan. And um, we had a, a trip planned to see him. And of course, Joe, when we got back, had to fly home for the funeral. And I stayed back because at the time he's going through a divorce and he still is a year and a half later we'll talk about that another time <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole another anyway, ball game <laughs> yeah, a whole other yeah anyway i stayed behind and thank goodness i did because i ended up collapsing um oh. and going to the hospital for several days while he was in uh, ohio oh. uh, you know with his family so um nobody could diagnose me nobody could figure it out they thought it was my heart at first and then within about three months, various synchronicities happened. You know how they happen. You yes, know. always. And um, led me to a, the right functional doctor who has huge success. She tested me. Um, seems that I've had chronic Lyme since I was a kid because I was bitten by ticks a lot when I was a child. Chicks? Um, but we didn't, yeah, we, we didn't know about Lyme back then. You know, I'm 60, almost 61 now. Wait, how and, is um, it different than like um, a deer tick? Uh, what, what? Well, What's the difference between this? I was thinking it was from the deer, you know, like a deer tick that comes off the deer, bites you, then you get... I'm not informed either, obviously. So what is well, this? It, it's the same thing. I mean, there are all kinds of ticks, though, but you can also get, you know, tick-borne illness from other uh, other bites, not just ticks, although ticks are the primary cause. You know, when I was a kid, my dad used to, you know, throw gasoline over my arm, pull the ticks out, you know, use nail polish. Right. I mean, we just got tick, ticks under right. us, and we didn't right. think anything about it, so... I had a lot of symptoms my whole life, and everybody just called me a hypochondriac. And, I mean, they were pretty severe, oh. you know, severe anxiety and blurred vision and all kinds of weird stuff. And nobody could figure out what was wrong with me. Well, when I got diagnosed, it was very clear, you know, that I had neuroline, which had infiltrated my brain, my, you know, my central nervous system. Oh, my um, gosh. Eight co-infections, so I've been dealing with that. And I almost died. I was sick as a dog, couldn't see, couldn't drive, thought I was never going to be the same again. <laughs> And uh, wow. with a lot of love from Joe and my sister and my daughter and great care. Um, and clearly I'm still supposed to be here or I would be gone by now. But, um, yeah, I'm coming out of it. You're coming so, out. Uh, you are coming out of it. <laughs> it's, it that's it in a nutshell. <laughs> you know, I don't think there is any heroic way to get through things. You know what I'm saying? Um, we all we all see people afterwards and how they are just um, in the glory of it. They've conquered it. They feel great. And and but sometimes even even the most enlightened person in the world, even the most um, knowledgeable person in the world, when they're going through there, there's things you go through when you're going through a long term sickness. And there is that time of of why am I fighting this? Have you ever oh felt that? Tina, are you kidding? <laughs> yeah, that- yeah, let me be super transparent here, right? We think we're all gurus. We've got it all together. You know, yes. peace, love, joy, and all that, right? Until something like that happens. And all of a sudden, it's like you realize you have no faith. You don't trust God at all. You're right. like wondering why the hell it happened to you. You know, are you going to die? You come face to face with your mortality. I yes. mean, Joe thought me my, my absolute worst. And I, and I was terrified. I have never been so terrified in my entire life. So sure. um, I really had sure. to get through all that, the anger, the fear, all that, and then really start putting into practice, taking action on all the things that I knew, all the tools, all the modalities. I mean, I was doing every crazy thing you can imagine, buying every tool, device, energetic clearings, emotional, like I went crazy and did everything I could just to survive and make it through the first six months. I bet you did. 
And you see, and, that's what it is. It's not we just lay down on our sofa and say, right. heal me. <laughs> right. Well, you, I asked to be. I, asked I to did, be too. Times. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. But yeah. you have to and do it yourself, you too. You have to. <laughs> you have to walk the walk. You. It's not going to just happen. If you're still creating the habits or you're ignoring the symptoms or you are... Right. Um, I don't know. You're just putting this faith in, in just only one type of healing. Uh, I, I always say God gives us all the things we need, yes. but we have to step up and use them. <laughs> well, and some are on this planet and some are not, but you have to use them all. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And you know what I love about it most of all? I mean, yeah, we really grow through these challenges. I mean, Joe and I are doing working on a healing course that's really going to be deep and transparent and authentic because I, there are people, you know, it's like, I hate to say this, like there are a lot of great coaches out there in programs, right? But the coachy stuff is over when you have something like yes. this, right? It's kind it of like, let's, so totally over. And let's, yeah, let's really deal with what people are feeling and get them through it. But what I was going to say is that what I love is that, you know, as I came, started coming out uh, and getting a little bit better, I still have another four months of treatment. I'm still having symptoms, but they're getting milder. Good. Um, is that, you know, we really get to look at um, the synchronicities. We, you know, I was really going through a lot of healing, like um, gratitude through comparison. Like, well, I, you know, I'm having that, that you know what, crazy anxiety right now, or, you know, I can't see or whatever. But then, but my hands are working, my heart's pumping. So I started doing gratitude by comparison. And then I started really seeing, I could have been in a whole different situation where I had no support. You know, right. I, I could have been in so many other situations and in a really bad space. And I ended up, you know, with Joe, uh, who is my absolute best friend and biggest supporter and cheerleader um, on top of my sister and my daughter and et cetera. But um, you have to really start seeing that, that the divine is in everything that happens for you. You okay. see, and that's humongous. You, I think yeah. sometimes when we are in a struggle, and it could be health, or it could be with your job, or it could be with your family, or it could be with money, it could be with um, just yourself. It, those are struggles just as real as some of the terribleness we go through with um, sickness, and, and those are very bad also. But when you are going through all of this, it is, it is the uh, having the support, it is having that... Um, I, it's it's looking. It's I like the comparison gratitude. I think you have to look at. It's so funny. We want to focus all our energies just on the sickness, but that can bring us down. That can make us very hard. Oh that, gosh. and it can put us also in a victim role. But if you can do the comparison, I love what you called it, the comparison gratitude, where you say, yeah, okay, I'm suffering from terrible anxiety because I can't see, which which I don't think is just anxiety. I think that's downright fear. <laughs> okay, that I get. I get. That's not anxiety. That's fear. And so so you're going through this fear, which anybody would if they're losing their sight, and, and to, to have that focus to say... Oh my gosh, you know, all right, but my arms are working, my hands working to pull ourselves out of it. You're not ignoring, but you're actually looking at some of the best parts that you can build on to, f to help fix what's going on. I, I think that was probably one of the biggest things you did to get yourself out of the, the panic, was it? Yeah, well, that well, the the part of the panic came from you know when it affects your ner central nervous system. I mean, people go, people commit suicide from Lyme and are put into psychiatric psychiatric hospitals because of the intense depression and anxiety that talks sure. to heart. So, I mean, just you know, um, you, you've got to really, I mean, it, it, you know, I knew I had a lot of tools over the years. I did energy work and everything else, picked up some new things. But I even lived, you would have seen my apartment, right? I had affirmations and, you know, things propelling me forward in, uh, in healing all over sticky notes, big ones, little ones, all over my walls, my ceiling, every room, everywhere yeah. I went. Just yeah. to try to focus on the good. And there were days I was like, well, this isn't working, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but I'm going to still keep at it. Keep at it. Keep at it. You have to hang on to something. You know, you have to hang on to something. And I think it makes us stronger. Uh, I think yeah. it, all these things are tests. And I think, Absolutely. I mean, you have definitely had your share of things in your life, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't think there's anybody better who can talk about this. And I have had my share of things. And I can mm. say, out of all honesty, that that um, 
it's it is definitely the the I don't know if I would change it. I wouldn't want to live it over. Let's put it that way. But I don't know if I would change it because I think it taught me everything I've been through has made me stronger in my connection to source my and and stronger in the confidence of myself and and knowing who I am, the good, the bad, the indifferent and that I'm here and I'm okay and I and I'm going on. Uh I don't think if everything were so easy in our life that we would grow. I agree. I mean, you wouldn't appreciate things either, and you wouldn't have the kind of gratitude. Polar that you opposites have when you go through stuff, right? Yeah. Right. But I really, I believe that too, and I believe that when we're here, because um, I know I've always known that I had a big life mission, but I had a lot of fear around getting to it. So I'd show up in a way that I thought was visible, but it was really showing up small, you know. Yes. And I really believe that. If you're meant to do something, that the divine will come in and shake things up. I mean, let's face it, when you're emulsified during these processes, whether it's yes. health, divorce, whatever it is, right, you're really, I call it emulsified. Like you're really, like it's a butterfly in the cocoon and it's, it's completely juiced up, right? There's nothing left of it, nothing recognizable. And then when it comes out of the cocoon, it's transformed into a beautiful butterfly. And I really believe that that's, that's the whole idea of transformation. And we can't be fully who we came, you know, who we came here to be. No. If we're living in fear and, you know, smallness and all right. that. And so the divine just gives us this nice little nudge, sometimes a big nudge. <laughs> I think but, so. Um, I really do yeah. feel like, uh, and I'll, I'll say it here, I really do feel that we come to this planet to learn. And sometimes we choose very hard things to go through. And I do or the universe says you're not really learning the lesson and gives you that nudge or or <laughs> not such a small nudge like you said. I uh, there was there's a big philosophy going around in the help self-help world. And it's I've always to tell you the truth Lisa, I have always felt well wait, that doesn't tell the whole story. And that is that we create all our circumstances. Oh, gosh, that's another huge. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about that, because that is okay. humongous. All right, so I won't, So, with that philosophy that we create every circumstance, why don't you comment on that a little? Well, I have been doing a lot of soul-searching on that. Me too. I know one day, you know... Um, because part of my you know, history was abuse and rape, gang rape, and all, all kinds of things, right? So my daughter said to me one day when I had talked about right, the law of attraction, she goes, well, she got really angry. And she said, what about if you're raped? You don't call that in. You don't create it. And so I actually had a conversation with Joe about it because I want it to be clear. And so I did get really clear, and I knew this before, but I really wanted clarity. And that is that, you know, in our subconscious minds, we carry a lot of stuff. We do that. We don't even know, right? Beliefs right. and limiting things, and and things that would that's and that's like your hard drive. That's what you're really creating from, even when you don't know. So you're never asking for anything. But I really think that this year has led me to also say that there is a part of us that cannot control everything. You know, exactly. Dies or it's your day, right? And I mean, if it's your day, it's your day. You're not going to get out of it. Like you might have escaped everything else, but you're going to go. So I really believe. There are things that happen to children, horrible th- there are horrible things that happen in the world, or there are things that are really difficult, and I really believe there's just this piece. I mean, we are, what's, what's the terminology? We are a strand of the divine, right? We're not the ones that created the universe, but exactly. we are a piece of that energy. We are but, the piece of that energy, yes. But we're just a piece. I mean, we don't know what somebody's karma is, what they're, you know, what they're supposed to experience. Exactly. So this intelligence that is creating all these things, and, and so we are co-creators and there are things that we do create there are things that we create unbeknownst to us and there are things that we are in not in control of exactly does that make sense it totally i do think that sometimes we can go walking down the street very merrily 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 as we go and life is just smooth and sailing and then all of a sudden bam something comes in and I do talk about the time, you know, during my divorce, the, 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 the attacks, but not my, they were not linked to the divorce that I can prove or know. But I do know my family was attacked and they were so severe. And I remember uh, uh, thinking to myself, I didn't ask for this. 
<laughs> this is not something that I said was okay. However, that's where I was able to apply rules, um, things that I knew way back when I had studied with Wayne Dyer. I dug it all up. I started my gratitudes. I started to try and bring everything forward in one way. But and the teachers started coming into my life. It was the biggest growth period for me. Mm. And without it, I probably would not have grown to where I am. And I love that. I mean, we talked about having Joe on the show, which you need to do, because his last year and a half between his brother trying to commit suicide and his dad dying and then oh, wow. torturous divorce, you know, he's really been a teacher for me because he has done nothing but try to be incredibly generous, loving, you know, paying for everything have this, take this, and and he has been met with constant no, no, no. You know, somebody who's looking for money that doesn't exist and all kinds of crazy, like crazy things. And this man has been put through the ringer for a year and almost a year and a half. Oh, my. Oh, my. Spending all the money, I mean, it is nuts. So talk about going through and then wondering, let's like, how can somebody so loving and so good and then sometimes you read stuff that people are writing, you know, because I've had he and I have had some pretty crappy write ups from people that think they know what's going on, right? That's very sad too. People don't know what other people are going through. I no, they no, reserve that. Know. Reserve that, please. I don't understand yeah. why people think they know everything. Yeah, no, we cannot know another journey. We just can't. No, but it, it's it's just like why? And, and I looked at Kobe Bryant and his daughter and all those people, and I'm going, why do these great, these these awful things happen to these amazing people. I'm like, why don't you leave the good people on the planet and take the bad ones, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's an age-old question. It's a very yeah. age-old question. It's what everybody has yeah. asked since the beginning of time. Why is such awful things happen to such great people? I really... I think, I know it sounds so trite. I know when you're going through it, you're saying, yeah, Elena, oh, come on, give me, get off of it, you know, but it's true. It does have something to teach us. And sometimes when you're going through it, you just can't find the answer. I always want to learn the lesson real fast so I don't have to go through it. <laughs> I want to just get through that lesson. Okay, I got it, universe. I got it, God. Okay, we can let this one go now. <laughs> But it, it doesn't work that way and because that's not the real lesson. And sometimes it takes fighting it. You know, my dad was funny. He, I remember when every time I was going through something hard or, or something was happening that was beyond my control, he always, he'd say, okay, just it's not time to cry right now. Now it's time to get through it the best way we can and then look back. But I do think you can cry once in a while because sometimes you need to vent that out. But don't let it overtake you. Right. I mean, I've cried. I've called God a few expletives, you know. Oh, sure you have. Sure you have. But, I mean, even just, you know, so, and I guess it just, so when I watch people like Joe and I, and I see other people and I see even myself because I'm in the middle of this too, right? Right. Um, I just, like you had said, it, it has to be to develop patience. It has to be to develop that inner fire, that courage, that, you know, that fortitude that's beyond anything you would have ever had if you wouldn't have been through the experience. So I agree with you. I mean, I um, would I had made all this go faster and go way faster? Yeah, but that's not what the plan is. I mean, if it was supposed to end, it would have been gone by now. It's still here. So exactly. Um, you know, what is the lesson? What can we learn from it? And what can we teach other people and help other people with from what we learn? So now you and Joe are developing something to help people get through this kind of thing and to answer these questions, which are Mm -hmm. pretty serious questions. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, I made the first video. We made the first video when I wasn't even able to sit still, see. I was really ill. And I was like, I'm going to move forward and do some of these videos anyway. And we had to take a hiatus because, you know, I really looked bad, (laughs) you know. But um, Yeah, uh, I bet you did. It was really just... um, for me, that one of the biggest things that has gotten me through as well, for those of you out there who are, you know, teachers or whatever, is is having that forward momentum, like knowing that I need to move forward. Like I used to, when I couldn't see and I was so sick and I thought I was dying, I would get up on my bed and I would look at this microphone on the wall that I had a picture of on the wall, you know, in front of like an audience. Okay. Because Joe and I are going to be going to Europe this summer to do some international speaking. 
And it's always been something I wanted to do on a greater, greater level, but I was afraid to. So I would get up on my bed, I would stand in front of the microphone, and I would start acting like I was pitching my, my story yes. and giving it to people, and I would record it. Oh, cool. And, yes. You know, I would just do things that would make me feel like I was moving forward, that I wasn't dying, I wasn't stuck. And that's what I continued to do. So we made a couple of videos when I was looking and feeling pretty bad because we wanted it to be raw for people, you know, because otherwise you show up with makeup and hair in place and people are going to go, well, you aren't sick. You don't look sick. You don't know what I'm going through. Right, right, right. Keeping the forward momentum going and showing up authentically. Yeah, it is showing. And, And it's this fear that people have. It's very easy to let go. It is so easy to eat to let go. I think, you know, during... The times that I have been going through things seriously, I have not, yes, there's a part that I just want to say, fine. It doesn't last for long. I think I'm always thinking forward. I'm always thinking, okay, if this isn't going to work with it, okay, I'm going to try this. And if this doesn't work, then I'm going to try this. And I'm always trying different roads. And it is patience, but it's, it's looking at, I always say there's more than one way to skin an onion. So <laughs> I didn't like the original saying. So this is mine. <laughs> so how to skin an onion and when <laughs> it's much more humane, don't you think? Yeah. So yeah. we we skin this onion. We can do it the one way and but we hit something. Well then don't give up. Don't say, "Okay, this doctor says I have this and that's the end of it and I'm not going to do anything else." You've got to look at different angles and you've got to be creative about it. You have to you have to look at all the different ways of peeling that onion. And I think that's what feeds you forward. I think that's what feeds you into um, always keeping moving and not giving up. You're listening to Magical Moments with your host, Elena Chapman. We're talking to Lisa Winston, and this is all about ease and betterment and healing today. We'll be right back to learn some ways to really get you started on that. This is Magical Moments with Elena Chapman, helping you find your ease and betterment. Stay tuned for more of this week's featured interview. Welcome back to Magical Moments, and I'm your host, Elena Chapman, and I'm here with Lisa Winston. And Lisa, we were just talking about this, and and on break we were talking a little, and I think this is important. Yeah, it is. It, It is those points when I get to that when you do just sort of say, okay, I'm going to trust this person seems to know what they're talking about. I'm going to trust this method. I'm going to trust, I'm going to let go. And this letting go in the healing process, that that's a surrender. That's humongous. And it's not just falling into a victim. It's different. It's not just saying, okay, I've got this. I'm going to suffer for the rest of my life. That is not letting go. That's just victimhood. Can you talk about this surrender? Oh my God, girl, that has been... <laughs> My biggest lesson, you know, it's like breast cancer came right after, two months after I lost my house to the fire, you know, the fire. Oh, wow. And that was like, I lost everything. So I really felt like, and feel like my ongoing lesson is surrender and letting go. And this illness, um, it went even deeper because I was, I was afraid I was going to lose my life. And so (sighs) it's really hard to surrender to that, you know, um, that's a big lesson and surrender and letting goes goes really deep. I mean, we're still generally holding white knuckled to whatever it is we're we do. Know, afraid of. <laughs> we do. So we do. It's um it is a journey. And I think the only way you get through that journey is to, like you said, go through these challenges. Um, because I have to tell you, I'm not there hundred percent with surrender and letting go yet. I've done it many times. But um sure enough it's gonna hit me again at some point <laughs> because I was resisting a lot and you know what you resist persists so well and isn't that the truth what you resist because of course you're putting resistance you're putting resistance Mm -hmm. in and you're saying this is what I want instead but Mm -hmm. this surrender I think surrender is a very big thing for everyone Um, we all want to surrender we all say we're going to surrender but somehow we just, and when I was growing up, it was, you, God can't help you if you don't help yourself. That was the golden rule in our house, you know? And, and to a certain extent, that's very true. You have to help yourself. Mm-hmm. You have to, uh, what Jesus say, do not sin anymore once he heals you. So when you go forward, you are, he means don't st- keep thinking you're sick. Don't keep bringing that illness back into your life. And so with that, I think... It's a very, it's, it's like walking a tightrope. 
a tightrope. You just you're you you're surrendering, but on the other hand, you still want to feel like you're healing. And sometimes it is not all the procedures you're going through. This healing is is on a deeper level. I do think a lot of it yeah. does come from with something within us that's causing us to um, well, whatever the lessons we have to learn. Oh, I agree. I think, again, a lot of it, I mean, I've worked with a lot of spiritual teachers and, you know, just karma, karmic stuff. Intuitives have told me it's a lot of it's karma, um, clearing through stuff, burning through stuff, you know, soul contracts. Like, I don't go, like, I'm yeah. pretty spiritual, but I don't really go that far. I don't know that much about that stuff. But Neither do I, actually. They, they supposedly exist, and it makes sense, you know, that you come in to a life experience um, with an agreement with other people, like a soul pod. Yeah, I've heard this, yeah. And, yeah. and that everybody around you, all the things that you go through, that has been all planned before, yep. but you just don't remember. I've, I've read that. I don't know. I'm, I'm on I the fence with that one. I, I just, yeah, I can't touch that. But I really believe from a human perspective, because we are souls and we can get very spiritual, but when we have these human moments and these human experiences, experiences yeah. Yeah, it's very painful. And so I really feel like what you're talking about here, the surrender and letting go process, I think there's a point where, like I said, I reached that point where I was just so tired of struggling and, you know, trying to make it all right. And I actually had to do a lot of mindset shifting. I had to really make a choice. You know, I can believe that I might die or I'm never going to be better, or I can join all these line line groups on Facebook, which I did at one point, and then I left them, and now I'm going back in and telling people I'm healing. But because there's this, this group mentality, this victim mentality that you're never going to get better. And the people that yes. stay together and they, you know, they, that creates a, a really strong negative force. It does. And so does. I made a choice to move away from those groups. I made a choice to start thinking differently, even though I didn't quite believe it at that point. So it really was um, choosing to believe a different thing and go a different way. And that, uh, that left me alone, by the way, a lot. Like I was by myself. Yes. Because you know how it feels when you're going through something, and a lot of people don't understand. I mean, I have to tell you, most of my friends jump ship again. That happened when I lost my house to fire and breast cancer. I know. If I wouldn't have had Joe, my sister, my daughter, you know, and, and a couple of friends popping in here and there. Yeah. Um, Isn't it interesting? I, I, yeah. I've, I've experienced that, too. It's amazing how few friends yeah. are around. <laughs> my yeah. mom said the same thing when they went through stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like all those people that they thought were such wonderful friends that they go out with every weekend and all this. They just mm -hmm. left. They left. I don't think I, I don't know. I think that's fear that they're going people don't want to get involved and, and they're, they're scared to get involved. But boy, that's when we need each other the most. <laughs> Yeah, they don't know what to say. But they don't know what I to realized, say. I realized, you know, because I'm, I'm, you know, I relocated to Texas. I was in California for 30 some years. And it was like I felt so isolated. Yeah, I bet you so did. Alone. I'm uh, sorry. And that was really hard for me. I'm not an extrovert anyway. I'm an introvert for, for the most part. Um, but I, we, like you said, we need people. Like when I was, you know, taking care of my mother when she was dying two years ago, um, and I just really realized that, you know, we're so focused on our businesses and stuff and going here and there and love relationships and all that. But we need to really focus on the people that we love, the people that surround yes. us. Because one day they're going to be gone. We're going to be gone. And that right there is what matters the most. All the other stuff is just, you know, <laughs> on the outside. It is so, so very true. And, and, you know, I, every day when I do my gratitudes in the morning, I know that... I know that we think, oh, why are you doing it again? But to me, it's always my family and my family comes first, my loved ones, my really good friends. All those wonderful people come first in my life. I think that fills your life. And those are the people who are going to be with you for the long journey and the long run. It, it is. We don't always notice them until it's too late. So, uh, yeah, that I'm. I would love, you know, you have been through a lot, Lisa, and and are going through a lot still. Yeah. I would love for you to give maybe three or four different steps or something that people could get started today to start to um, move themselves in a direction. You know, maybe they're just, they've had enough. You know, they just have had it. I, I still say when I, whenever I get to those points when I've just had it, when I really just had it, that's when I see the universe come into play. 
Yeah. And it, it's almost like it has to break me down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right there with you. <laughs> I don't. I understand. I want to make a new contract. You don't have to break me down anymore. <laughs> I have a hard head too. I do. I do. Yeah. So, but when I do break down, I, I talk about the the day that I went um, to that monastery, not knowing it was a monastery. It was a bad, bad day. Let the car take itself. I just bad, bad, bad day. And I remember when in that clearing. I just closed my eyes. I said, I can't do this anymore. I got to that point. And that's when I felt the universe, the, the trees bend in, the, 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 all these insects came around, the hawk flew over, the breeze started kissing my cheek yeah. and just saying, you know what? You're connected and you have us to rely on. These little openings always happen when you just can't do, you can't, you give up. But I do, do you find that? Oh my gosh, yes. I mean, they're getting us to surrender, you know, spirit just says surrender into my arms, even though you don't believe, you know, I I used to talk to my angels and guides and I'm like, where are you people? You know, there's <laughs> <laughs> nothing happening. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I get it. I get it. I've done that too. It's so nice to hear somebody else. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, me say too. the same thing I say. <laughs> Like, okay, guys, this is what I need you. Where are you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it wasn't always that nice. But anyway. No, <laughs> but for radio. <laughs> yeah. For radio, right. Oh, my gosh. But, but when you surrender, then you do feel it. Do you feel it or not? Yes, but you have to come to true surrender. I mean, for me, it was constant. Yeah, I'm surrendering. I'm surrendering. But then it was constant resistance, really. I felt it. And until I really just gave up and said, okay. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I don't know how long it's going to take. I don't know. Right? It's authentic. And, it's an authentic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's trust. It's trust. And, tr- and I've always had trust issues, too. So I think we all do. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. We do. It is. It's a total trust and a surrender. And, and it does take you down to the bare minimum. But when you find that, I always find that. Something helps me every darn. Well, not something. I know what it is, but it's when it comes in. It's almost that. I don't know. I don't know if it's our own hard heads. I don't know what it is, but it, it for some reason we offer so much resistance before, but sometimes it is that letting go. What are three things or, or maybe more? I'm putting a number to your system and that's not a good way to do it, <laughs> but something that people can grab, you know, to, to start to move forward. Maybe someone has just given up. Maybe they're, and they're not finding that inspiration from the universe. Or maybe someone has just been diagnosed with something and thinking, how am I going to get through this? What, what is some tools that they can use to, to try and make it a little easier? Well, can I give you, I just want to give you a couple of thoughts and then a couple of tools. Is that okay? Oh, some gosh, yes. Yes. Okay. Um, first of all, Allow yourself to have your authentic journey. Allow yourself to kick, scream, be angry, whatever it is. That's real. You don't have to prove anything to anybody. It's your journey alone, and it is hard. I know there. I've I've been there. Um, Always have at least one person who supports you, somebody you can talk to. You have to have someone you can talk to and somebody you trust. Yes, Um, I agree with that. I wouldn't know what to do without that person, actually. Oh, me too. I, I think... I think a lot of people die that don't have support. I really do. I know. Because it's because it's so lonely. You you feed on yeah. your negativity. You just, oh, yeah. it's a terrible circle. That's when Absolutely. that person beside you can give you hope, can pull you out of it, or just have fun, give you a lighter view. I mean, you need that person. And by that way, that person who's helping that person needs a person. <laughs> you know what that's for. It's a chain effect. You need to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't realize that. The caretakers need somebody. You need someone you can just vent to. You know, you're creating your own disease. I like that one very much. That's very important. And what else? Thank you. You're welcome. (laughs) Um, Always say yes. I know this is hard. This is part of my book. This is part of what I teach. But when stuff comes to you, there's a point where you just have to say, okay, I don't know if I created it. I don't know if it's a lesson. I don't know what it is, but I have to say yes to it. And you have to watch again for that thread, you know, those, those, those little steps. Um, what, and the biggest thing everybody out there is that I want you to remember the present moment is all we really have. And I know a lot of people say, well, that's yes. Cause you know, um, 
life is happening. But the problem is, is that no, no, no. I could, we could be on this call and I could drop dead in like five minutes from now. I don't know <laughs> what, what's going to happen. <laughs> that right? was That's special. True. I know it's true. I know it's true. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. So, you know, say yes to the, the present moment, whatever that looks like. You have yes. to learn to um, accept those present moments. There's got to be a way for you to just say, okay, I don't understand any of this, but I accept it because it is. And if it wasn't this way, then I would know it wasn't supposed to be this way. Yeah. And then just really look for those um, divine, you know, uh, divinely guided hits, uh, the yes. inspiration, the, the orchestration, the synchronicities, yes. and take baby steps in those moments. Whatever that baby step oh, is, I love, you know, if it's something yes. as stupid as standing, right, me standing on my bed in front of a wall with a microphone and saying my speech to people, right. whatever it is that speaks to you, do right. it in moment, say yes to it. Yeah. You know, and that goes for life, too. And I'm always right. talking about baby steps. I'm a big proponent of What About Bob, that movie. That mm-hmm. I, I just uh, that still makes me laugh like I have tears coming down my... You, you remember with Bill Murray, that Bo- What About Bob, the one that... That was a long time... To- wasn't that a long time ago? Well, yes. That was. Well, at least it's yeah. not as old as some of the other movies I like. I like Bill Murray. <laughs> I like Bill Murray. Me, too. But, but it, he always talked about baby steps, baby steps. And, and we always feel like we have to take these huge steps, but it, really consistent baby steps in anything, even in our journey. I love that when you say that um, we give it, it, it is that surrender, but it's also that keeping the hope every day with little tiny steps. And yeah. those little tiny steps that you do, you don't know, just doing gratitudes in the morning, just... Yeah. Um, Trying to say, okay, today I feel better. I'm going to try doing this, or I'm going to try something different. I'm going to try journaling, or I'm going to take a walk, or I'm going to call this friend and see if I can get some support over here. I'm not going to suffer through this alone. These are strategic little baby steps that help you to heal. They're on your path. They and, well, and I love that you're giving those. Yeah. Oh. Go ahead. <laughs> no. Yes. That's exactly what you'd ask for tools. Also. Yes. Perfect. And, and taking a walk, you know, being in nature. I love that. Oh, being in nature is so important. And and when you're in nature, even if you're not a tree hugger like me, you still <laughs> put your hand on the tree mm-hmm. and just say, please, I just need to feel love and strength. Let your feet feel the earth and allow the, the earth, the beautiful earth I, to just come up and meet you and just feed you always give love back always 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 but feel that you've got so many resources around here that can help you being in the present is a necessity because that's the only place that divinity can touch you yeah and if you're in your head going i'm sick i'm sick i'm sick i'm sick or i'm i've got to go through this situation i'm i'm fired and i don't know what to do and you spin it and you spin it and you're thinking all this awful fear and this this um oh just it's a spinning negativity vortex of negativity and that is not present moment folks that is no. future thinking the worst yeah you've I got to come 100%. right to the present moment okay uh, my job's here. I, I just, okay, I just lost my job. Okay, that's what it is for today. And and I've just got to think about what I want to do. Maybe I'll sit down, have a cup of tea, and think about some of my options and do a T-square or something. Or maybe I'm just going to think maybe this is my opportunity to really make it happen. You have to take the steps. Thank you. Yeah. That's, yeah. I really want to just, you know, I hope that everybody heard that because that was what I was going to say next. You've got to take some kind of action. You don't have to get crazy, but like you mentioned, gratitude or, you know, like I did vision boards all over, affirmations, oh, yeah. energy work, you know, there are all kinds of things you can do. There's something else I want people to, to look for. If I can just mention it really quickly, it just sure. kind of popped in my head. I, I post pictures all the time because what I do is I, I look for the love in the universe. And you would not yeah. believe the places I've seen it. I've seen, you know, fuzzies on my carpet. I've seen, you know, hearts in my coffee cup. I've seen butter turn into a heart. I've seen, you know, crumbs turn into a heart. Oh. I, I mean, in my tile, <clears throat> in the bathroom, whatever. I mean, always keep your eyes open because the universe loves you so much. It's always trying to show you love by, you know, the shape of a leaf or whatever it is. Keep your eyes open. Be aware. Look around you and you'll catch hearts everywhere you go. No kidding. Yeah, you will. It's really cool. 
And and if you are, if you keep your eyes open and you're just trusting more than you're worried, then you'll see it in other people too. All of a sudden you'll see kindness coming from all areas and, and just little kindnesses. And when you, um, and if you, even in the hardest times of your life can be, all right, that's what it is. But this moment right here, this person's being so nice and you're nice back. It, it, it all of a sudden there's a flow and an energy and it changes your energy. Do you see? So that's why the universe brings this stuff into you. And it's little helping things that help you get into the present where you need to be, to help you get to focus in the way you need to focus. Look for them. I, I think those are very good ideas. And and really that that giving hope. I always find I like I'm a big learner. I love, I love, love, love to learn. So I will go on YouTube or Google or books. Mm -hmm. uh, I love to read um, O'Donohue, some of the sacred texts of O'Donohue. Find, find people that inspire you when you're sick. People that raise your curiosity. You know, don't listen to garbage. You don't need garbage in your life. Right. <laughs> you need, you, you, nobody does. But really start to, something that makes you laugh and something that inspires you. Those are the things I would, I would add. To, to I love you. You're perfect. We're we're so aligned. I love that. So many, <laughs> so many good tools that people can use. It's crazy how many different things you can do. You know, you're not boxed into one way. It can be a million ways. Um, I always remember, um, was it in uh, What the Bleep or whatever, that movie where they had all the basketballs bouncing on the court? Oh, yes. So you focus on one. There are like a million different options that you can take. So, But you have to focus on one. You have to become the present. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no shiny baubles, guys. One. <laughs> well, it is. It is. I understand when, how easy it is when you are going through something to just say, there's two ways to surrender, folks. And the way that says, I wash my hands of this, I'm done. And, and mm -hmm. that is shortcoming your lesson. And when you shortcoming come your lesson, what really happens, folks, is you just prolong it because it's going to come in another shape, in another form, because you haven't learned what you were here to learn. I do know that. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. <laughs> and both Lisa and I, well, yeah, it does sound like we both have just a tiny little stubborn streak in us. So we've learned this lesson. And I think it's extremely, the other surrender is just saying, okay, I don't know what to do anymore. I really have to just let go. I, I'm, I'm at my wit's end. And you can say this to source. And that is where you're saying, please take this from me. Please lift this up from me. Please help me to deal with this. Bring me things in this life that can help me, help me spiritually, help me body, and help me soul. And that is a true surrender. There's a difference. Yes, and I love that because we are part spirit. That's the thing. We, we are having this human experience and we forget that we have all this beautiful divine intelligence in our body, our hearts beat without us doing anything, we breathe without any help. And um, yeah, all we have to do is surrender to that and we'll allow it to flow. And I love it. Allow that. it to flow. Really, I think that's what, anytime that I'm in anything, I wouldn't know what to do without the universe. And really, it is that surrender because I, um, I don't, oh my gosh, if I could not surrender to something. Uh, what would you what do? Would you do? Right. What would you do? Exactly. And yet that is the key to everything. Yes. It is that surrender in life. It's too bad we need a crisis to learn that. Oh, I know. It's so true. Mm, yeah. We're human after all. <laughs> yeah. We're yeah. Human, and that's part of the human condition, I guess. So. Uh, so, you know, I do agree with all the people who say that I have never thought. You, they say that there's an old saying that what you can't imagine, you can't have in your life what you can't imagine. Have you heard that, Lisa? No, I haven't actually heard it put that way. Yeah, ah, so, so you can never imagine higher than you can imagine. Mm. And so that's even in our visualizations, we limit ourselves because that's imagination. That's we, true. So, so yeah. even in our manifestations, we, we 
can't even comprehend what the universe has in store for us because our imaginations are limited. So if that's the case, I can honestly say things that have happened in my life, I never even imagined. (laughs) Right. Right. It was way past what I could ever have in my imagination or my knowledge. Yeah. And if that's the case, how did I manifest it? Mm. And that's the case I, I want to put out there to so many people who think they have caused their own, their own, mm. their own sickness mostly. Yeah. And, and to give them a break on that because you haven't. You didn't cause your own sickness. You didn't cause that that terrible situation that you couldn't even comprehend how it came into your life. Right. Right. But you do have a choice in how you want to deal with it. Absolutely. And you do grow from it. You always grow from it. And you can help other people with it. That's the ultimate goal, I think, is to help others get through it. So tell us, yeah, yeah, and oh, and always help someone to get through it. Now, tell us what you're doing. You're going on a crew, you're doing a a retreat. What are you doing to to help people to deal with some of these crises? Well, um, basically, um, Joe and I are doing a four or five month, uh, four or five months, four or five weeks in Europe. We're going to be in Portugal and Italy and and Slovenia, Romania, perhaps Russia. We're, We're doing a speaking tour and really talking about law of attraction. We're talking about miracles, magic, and we're talking about um, my book, you know, following your inner guidance and kind of like the breakdown, the breakthrough theme, how to get through that kind of stuff. Um, And so, and I'm going to also be sharing a message about Lyme because it's really important that people know they need to keep their immune system super strong (laughs) because um, yeah, it is a lot, a lot more people walking around with it than they even know. Yes. Well, a lot of people walking around with a lot of stuff that they don't know. (laughs) It is very true. In the present moment, though, right? One day at a time. That's all we have. That's all we have. That's all we have. And it's taking care of your own health, opening your immunity. A lot of things don't attack things with high immunity. Uh, I love that you're doing all this stuff going out into all Europe and everything. I think you are on a fabulous journey. And I think even though you're going through it, the vulnerability that you're showing and that you're teaching people to, to it's okay, it's all right, and, and there is no perfection, and it's okay to say, you know, I'm going through this journey and to surrender it and to also at the same time keep that hope. I mean, you're teaching a lot of important things that people need to learn. Well, thank you for having me, and thank you for the show, because that's really spreading awareness. And so I'm grateful to be here and allowed to share my journey. And if people want to get hold of you, how do we get hold of you? Yeah, you guys can find me on my website, which is lisaawinston.com, and also um, on my Mindset Reset show, which is mindsetresettv.com. Love that. Ah, very cool. And for everyone out there, you know, I think one of the most important things for us always to remember that everyone you see on a daily basis is going through something. Yeah. And I think we are um, with, I see so much lack of tolerance in so many areas now. We're so in our head. We're so on the phone. We're so, um, I call it McDonald's world. We get everything when we want it. We are impatient and it's caused this um, disconnect. It's caused a disconnect. And I think if we just, every time we wanted to be short with another person, if we could just say, I really don't know the journey they're on. I'm going to reserve that judgment for today. And that is a humongous plus that will add to the positivity in your own life. But I think if you understand that everyone is going through that journey that that you don't understand, there's no reason for us to be fake. There's no reason for us having to live some kind of life that we are is not real. We can be more vulnerable and people will love us for it very big. I love you all. Stay connected to yourself. Stay connected to others. Stay connected to source. And thank you, Lisa, for being a part of our show. Namaste, everyone. Namaste. This has been Magical Moments with Elena featuring Elena Chapman. If you miss an episode, you can download it now from your favorite podcast platform, including iTunes, Spotify, TuneIn, CastBox, Deezer, Stitcher, 
and Google Podcasts. Podcasts by Federated Media.